Within programmatic trading, there are two pillars, the buy side and the sell side. The buy side are advertisers and agencies who have got their message that they want to put forward in front of consumers. The sell side are the publishers who have got space on their websites that they want to be able to sell advertising on to be able to further generate content on their site. When a consumer arrives on a website, there's a whole load of mechanisms that work in the background without them even knowing. A call is made from that browser, the, co the consumer's browser, to a variety of different systems within the ecosystem that allow them to show the right ad to the right person at the right time. So these involve the auction-based system, so there is a bidding that happens for different advertisers to be able to decide on how much they're willing to pay to put that advert in front of those that consumer's eyes and a load of different data points as well. So for example, a particular brand may not wish for their advertising to appear against some content which is um, potentially adult in nature. Um, being able to screen against that is very important for advertisers so they show the right message in the right environment for that user. The demand side platform or DSP is a tool that we use to buy media. Essentially, it first gives us access to all inventory that's out there, then gives us access to data, so the data that the advertiser has themselves, their first-party data, but all other data that's sold on the marketplace. So we can build targeting uh, definitions of whom we want to reach. Then we program the DSP with the algorithms against the KPIs that we want to achieve, and the DSP then buys and decides on every impression that's offered to it, whether that impression is what we want to buy and what would be the right price to pay. The DSP connects into what's called an SSP, which is the supply side, which contains all of the ad space that is available. It enables publishers, but that's media owners, people who manage websites, um, so look at broadcasters and things like that as a good example, um, to be able to really monetize their inventory. So what we do is connect them to what we would call a DSP, um, which is um, demand side platforms. Um, but it really allows basically all of the buyers um, access to all of their inventory. Um, and when we talk about inventory, we mean supply. So access to their website, access to their users, um, which is in for data. It allows them to make sure that they are selling that supply or that inventory and maximizing the best price for it. Um, so this is all done in what we would call real-time bidding. Um, and real-time bidding really means that an auction takes place um, and all of those different buyers then have access to be able to buy that inventory um, and the highest bid wins. For a buyer, accessing a supply through an SSP allows them to tap into multiple publishers at the same time, increasing efficiencies and allowing them to negotiate rates and get better KPIs. So a DMP is a data management platform. A data management platform collects intelligent online information about audiences. This data can then be segmented and then activated via a DSP or an SSP online. The type of data which we can collect is could be demographic data, so age, gender, marital status. Uh, you can also collect information on location. Um, you can collect information on the user's browser history, what they're interested in and then use that data to better target audiences online. Data really helps uh, marketers understand their audience. It helps them reach the right consumers, minimize their wastage of their dollars, and be effective in their campaign goals. In the old days, you'd need to guess who your audience was in advance and plan this meticulously ahead of time. Within programmatic media, you can pivot and adjust your strategies um, very much in real time to determine what the results are looking like. Within programmatic trading, there are tens of thousands of different data points which are available. They generally fall into three different buckets, first party data, second party data, and third party data. First party data is generally data that you own yourself as an advertiser. A good example of this might be a supermarket which has their own loyalty scheme and knows a lot about their consumers that shop within their stores. The pros for the uh, first party data is that it's very, very well defined, um, but unfortunately it's usually in small pools or maybe in different data silos within the business or the advertiser that is looking to advertise. 
Second party data is generally data that is not your own, but is not generally available to the public. So for example, this may well be something like publisher data, where you could work with a publisher to broker a deal directly with them to determine what the um, data sets and the audiences are that you need to be able to advertise to. The pros of second party data is that it's generally a better scale than first party data, but of course, you need to be able to broker this deal directly with the publisher. So it's relatively time consuming. Third party data is a whole nother different section of data that's available to advertisers. There are literally tens of thousands of different audiences which you can buy off the shelf and you buy them on a license based model. So you, you pay for them as you use them. So it allows you to very effectively pick and choose these different data elements for your campaign and to be able to then try them out for your campaign and see whether it meets your metrics. One of the concerns that often people have about third party data is both quality and that there's a lot of it available, so it's hard to be able to pick. So contextual targeting has proved very popular with our um, advertisers and agencies in the last few years. So contextual targeting is all about the mindset of the consumer. So if you think about an example here, that um, if someone arrives on a news site and they're looking for uh, financial news, then they jump onto a travel site to book their holiday and their lunch break. They're in two completely different mindsets at that point. And advertisers are able to then target that shift in mindset between a work-based task and a personal-based task in real time to find the right advert that can go against that content. So a good example of this was an automotive manufacturer that we worked with recently, and they were promoting two different new car lines. For their saloon campaign, they discovered something unexpected. They discovered that most of the people who were configuring those vehicles on their site were actually Android users, not iPhone. And they'd been using Creative um, within their campaign that showed the iPhone features of the vehicle. By simply switching those out to the Android features, it resonated a lot better with those consumers. They were able to increase conversion by three times to test drives above the, uh, the iPhone Creative. To learn more, the IAB have got a white paper on their website entitled Using Data in Programmatic Effectively. There are many buying models on the pinning programmatic. I think programmatic as an auction-based system where in real time buyers and sellers auction off ad space. Or it could be in a fixed price where the programmatic element really is the use of data and algorithms for targeting and for delivering the ad from the, for instance, ad server of the advertiser um, to the publisher and therefore the consumer. If we want to dive into the uh, programmatic models, um, there's really two sides of the coins. Uh, one is the auctions and the other one is a non-auction uh, programmatic. Um, on the auction side, which uses the what we call an RTB protocol, a real-time bidding protocol, uh, there's again two different uh, models, uh, public uh, auctions or private auction. Public auction is defined as open exchange, and basically that allows a publisher to offer his inventory to the largest pool of uh, buyers on the market without any restrictions. When we talk about OMP, which is open marketplace, you're really talking about all of the inventory pool that people will have access to and therefore can bid on. So, so the open market's a really interesting concept. There's, there's various tools in the, in the marketplace that enable you to see which campaigns are live from a programmatic basis, who's trading with who, and you're able to get a feel for what's going on in the market, but you don't actually know if they want to buy your audience. So the, the open market is a really important source of going through the reporting, seeing which clients and advertisers want to buy your inventory, uh, and then following up and following through to the, the actual the, the trader and the buyer. On the uh, private side, we call it uh, private marketplace or deal IDs. That offers some uh, restriction in terms of uh, the buyers that are being invited to, to bid. Um, so terms are sort of pre-negotiated in terms of uh, volumes um, or uh, sort of uh, ad type, for instance, um, and uh, and then the sort of the, the, the inventory is offered for bidding, where sellers will provide a deal ID uh, for trafficking. That offers the sellers uh, more control over where the inventory is sold to. Um, and on the flip side, obviously, the buyers have a greater understanding of where 
their uh, ads or campaign uh, will be uh, displayed on. There's a more value that's put into PMP because of the data set that you're going to be providing. Um, but it does, again, give publishers that different control in how they engage with publishers and how they buy through them. Now, if we look at the other end of the spectrum, there's so the non-auctioned uh, inventory. Again, there's two sides uh, to this, where inventory is uh, guaranteed or not. So preferred deals are um, where inventory um, uh, is not fully uh, guaranteed. Buyers and sellers make a um, deal terms in terms of ad placement, ad type, audiences, and they predetermine fixed price. The programmatic uh, guaranteed as an added guaranteed inventory delivery added to this. Um, so that's also even more sort of control uh, to, the, to the buyers and sellers. We've seen a massive increase in terms of uh, private marketplace. Although we're seeing today um, also a rise uh, in programmatic guaranteed, particularly from the premium end of the spectrum, um, as it offers more sort of guarantees and, and more control.